Joining me now to discuss his recent award of the Research to Stop Neglected Tropical Disease Transmission, the R2 Stop Award, for his leprosy research is Kevin Macaluso, Ph.D. Dr. Macaluso is the Mary Louise Martin Professor in the Department of Patho- Pathobiological Sciences at LSU. Dr. Macaluso, welcome to the show, sir. Uh, thank you for having me on. Yes, sir. Well, when I, I got this uh, press release I was and looked at uh, the summary of your research, I was really excited to talk to you about it ask you a question or two but uh, before we get into the research um can you briefly discuss what the r2 stop award you know what it is and etc yeah it's it's a foundation based out of uh canada canada that's focused on uh, neglected tropical diseases um and basically what they were looking for were innovative uh, uh proposals to look at tropical diseases, neglected diseases, including leprosy, in which we could um, bring a new a new angle to the uh, problem. And so working with collaborators uh, in the school, we were able to uh, identify something that was relatively understudied and unanswered. So we put in a proposal to uh, look at the zoonotic transmission of leprosy uh, via an arthropod vector. Yeah, and this is the most fascinating thing. Now, your research is titled Role of Arthropods in Transmission of Leprosy. Uh, so you're proposing that a certain species of tick may be a vector to transmit the leprosy bacterium. Uh, can you talk about this in more detail? Sure. I mean, so basically, you know, the majority of patients that are presenting with uh, zoonotic strains of uh, mycobacterium leprae, which is the agent of leprosy, uh, note extensive outdoor activity, but they rarely report a uh, history of direct contact with wild armadillos. And, and wild armadillos have long been associated with um, leprosy, especially in the southwestern United States. And so whether or not uh, M. leprae is transmitted to new vertebrate hosts through the environment independently, which is the current thought that it's, you know, aerosol or direct transmission with an infected host, vertebrate host, such as the armadillo, or if some other, such as a vector, um, could be involved, it is really a fundamental question of leprosy transmission. And to date, no study has clearly demonstrated the mechanism by which M. leprae travels from one case, one human infection, to another. So we had a chance to explore a new possibility there. And and what kind of tick is this you're going to be looking at? Well, uh, we deal with hard ticks, which are exoded ticks, and these are the ones most commonly, people most commonly encounter on, on their companion animals or themselves. And so these ticks have uh, multiple life cycle stages. So there's an immature tick, which we call larvae. There's the next stage, which is a nymph, which is also immature. And then we have adult ticks. And so the real interesting thing about ticks in general is that they have the ability to feed multiple times on multiple different hosts. So each life cycle stage takes a blood meal. So there could be three hosts involved in a typical uh, tick life cycle. Um, There are amblyoma is the genus of the ticks that are associated with armadillos in the southwestern United States. Uh, the particular species that's most commonly recovered from these armadillos would be uh, Amblyoma uh, auriculatum, auricularium, excuse me. Mm-hmm. And that's the one that's recovered off of ticks um, or off of armadillos most commonly in Florida. A recent study came out where they showed that 50% of the armadillos were infested with these ticks, averaging about six ticks per armadillo. Now, we don't have this species in uh, in culture. We don't maintain a colony of this particular species. So we're going to use another all, amblyoma tick, which is amblyoma maculatum, which is the Gulf Coast tick, um, which is known to bite humans uh, readily, but it also and it bites a number of uh, uh, other vertebrate hosts. Um, we don't have a record of it off of armadillos, but we should be able to use it as a model system in a laboratory setting. Are, are you are is your research piggybacking off of anything that's d- been done in the past? Um, no, not with Mycobacterium leprae. Mm-hmm. Um, there have been some studies that have looked at lice, uh, fleas, uh, um, uh, kissing bugs, and their role in transmission. And a lot of that's been show, uh, shown mechanical transmission, which is just basically infectious organisms on on the body parts or on the mouth parts of the insect or the arthropod right. and transmitting it between 
between hosts. Um, mosquitoes have also been explored. We're looking at biological transmission, so it's the ability of a tick to take in a blood meal from one host that's infected, and then if it can incubate in the tick and then still transmit to a new host, a naive host, and that would be that would be a big step oh, yeah. um, showing that. Uh, if, it, if it happens, it's a, it's a pretty high high risk project, but it, it's definitely somewhere that needs to be explored. Yeah, well, very interesting. Um, thank you, Dr. Kevin Macaluso, for your time and expertise, and congrats on your award. And, oh, thank you very much. And I hope you'll come back to discuss your research findings when you're done. Will do. We'll be in touch. For uh, sure. Thank you, sir. Thank Appreciate you. it. All right. Thank you. Bye-bye. All right.